badass business owners. Welcome to another episode of the Local Small Business Coach Podcast, where each episode we work on getting you to $100,000 in take-home pay. So if you're all ready to boost your profits, increase your sales, improve your processes, and develop stronger teams so you can stop living job to job, then let's dive in. Hey, badass business owners. How's it going? All right. I, I want to, I've actually had a question a couple times this week uh, with folks that I've been coaching and talking to, and it has to do with their business and where they should be doing business. You know, obviously, I'm a huge fan of our local communities. Uh, that's who I target, that's who I want to focus on, and that would be the majority of you. Now, Part of that is our communities look very different. For some of us, we have communities where it's a smaller town. Smaller town could be anywhere from 50,000 people on down. Some of you are in town that I've talked to have downs of like 10,000 people. Uh, some of you live in communities where there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people and it, it's pretty large and it goes pretty big. But when, you, here's the thing, when I say local, what I really want you to focus on is in the local area that you live in. So even though you may be part of a bigger town, you don't necessarily need to, to serve that entire town. So for example, I'm in Arizona. So obviously Phoenix Metro is huge. The city of Phoenix is small, but the actual, when people think of Phoenix, it's pretty big. There's the west side, the east side. You can go north, you can go south. It's, it's pretty big. And you'd be foolish to try to serve everybody. Now, that said, that's if you're a solopreneur. If you're by yourself trying to do that business, that is crazy. Now, if you're trying to scale your business into becoming, you know, at a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, a million dollar business, then yeah, you're going to put crews in the different areas of that valley or that area and be able to do it. You know, I lived in California. Same thing with San Diego. San Diego is huge. You got the North Valley. You got down south. You know, same thing. You got little towns inside. At the end of the day, what you want to focus on is small and then grow from there. What I don't want you to do, which is what a lot of people do, is they chase sales everywhere. People will call them up and say, hey, do you go to X town? And X town happens to be 30 minutes, an hour away. Um, and because we need money and because we need the sales, we tend to chase those sales. But by the end of it, if you actually ran the numbers for that job, most of you are going to make little to no money. And you probably turned away a local job in your community that would have made you a heck of a lot more money. So it actually lost you money. It cost you money because while you made, I'm just going to make up numbers, may you may have made, you know, $50 on that particular job. Had you had it over open spot for somebody local, it may have made you $100, in which case it cost you $50 for that job. I really want you to, to, to look at the area that you service and are you just chasing sales versus focusing on your area and driving and growing the sales within that community. Now, you probably have noticed that when you look at big box retailers or uh, bigger companies, especially we'll focus on big box retailers, if you will, or any kind of type store. Have you ever noticed that sometime, and, and uh, fast food does this as well. For example, in my little town, we have 50,000 people. It's still a smaller town. Uh, we are growing, but we have three McDonald's and people joke around and laugh that we have three McDonald's and they make fun of that. But guess what? All three McDonald's are always busy. And the reason that they're busy is they service three different areas of town. Now, could you drive over to the other McDonald's and it'll take you an extra five minutes? Yes, but that's not what we want. We associate fast food with being able to get what we want when we want it as quickly as we want it. Fast food companies know that. So if they create the need from us, for example, we want our Big Macs, we want our fries, we want our whatever, then we want and we have that craving and we want to get to it as fast as possible. This is also true of, for example, Starbucks. A lot of you guys out there drink Starbucks. If you drink Starbucks, you probably also have a lot of Starbucks in your area. We have three Starbucks in our town. We have them in stores as well as we have a brick and mortar piece of it. And the reason is when someone's shopping, they want you to relax and enjoy yourself and have that Starbucks within. 
Now, the Starbucks that's inside the grocery store knows that it's not going to get the people that are riding around, driving around and everything else, that even though they're going to drive right past it, they're not necessarily going to go park in a parking lot and go inside that store. They know that they're ideal customer for that particular Starbucks location are the people shopping and that's who they're going for. Now, is there a small part of that, those sales that come from people that specifically drive there for it? Absolutely. And for the longest time, that's what you had to do here in this town before we had our brick and mortar type uh, standalone one. You actually had to drive to the grocery store and get out of your car, go inside, go to the bashes, and then you can get your, your um, go up to the counter and be able to get your Starbucks. But what my point is the reason they have multiple locations is so that because they know there's a n- plenty of business within a certain mile radius of each of those locations. Even if you take a big box retailer, same thing. You know what? If you take a Home Depot, you probably can find one every 30 miles or so, unless you are in the boondocks. Yeah, in the boondocks, they know that that particular store's mile radius because the populations are much smaller. They're going to get people that are going to drive two, three, four hours. But that's common because of how large of a landscape that they are servicing. The smaller the town, they obviously know they need to pull from larger locations. But for the vast majority of you in your particular business, odds are you do not need to drive hours a day trying to find the ideal customer. What I want to challenge you to is to use what's called the five mile rule. And the five mile rule is you should have plenty of business in your community within five miles of your location. If you were to have a brick and mortar location, typically a brick and mortar is going to pull within five miles of their location. But as a service-based business, your five mile radius is going to be where you live. Look, or if you farm a specific area. So what I want you to start thinking is going, okay, when you sit back and you actually look, like get a map, go to Google Maps, look it on your your, uh, phone, grab a physical map, whatever it is. And I want you to draw out five miles and make a big giant circle from your location. And I'm going to bet you that you're going to find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of homes within that five mile radius. So for example, even in my town, if you do a five mile radius, you're still going to pull up, I want to say 10 to 12 of our subdivisions will be in that five mile radius with a th- an average, you know, anywhere from 800 to 1,000 homes, guess what? That's that's almost, what, 10,000 homes within that particular area. Now, each of you, once again, you're going to be a little different. I understand that some of you are going to have a lot of home concentration. Some of you are going to have a lot of business concentration. But what I want you to do is ask yourself, because you have to continue to dive that down, because part of it is how many homes and locations. But even that doesn't matter. It depends upon what you specifically do. For example, if you are a handyman, you definitely can stick to your five mile radius for the vast majority of everything that you do. There are plenty of houses for you to be able to service. You don't have a customer problem, you have a lead problem, okay? There's a difference. There are plenty of customers for a handyman within a five mile radius. If they don't have a lot of business, they have a a lead generating business. It's because those people that live within that five mile, my five mile radius don't know they exist or they don't know that that handyman can solve those pain points that they have. Now, if you happen to put garage doors on and you happen to be in a community full of carports, then obviously that's going to be a much difficult uh, and more difficult. You're going to have a bigger difficult time finding people that want to put garage doors on unless all of a sudden your specialty is converting carports into garages, in which case you have a plethora of homes that you can service. So you can see the difference. Whatever you do, whatever you specialize in, you've got to ask yourself, are there plenty of people? I'm not telling you, and I want to go back to what I said a few minutes ago, because it's very important you hear this. It's not about, are you getting the business within that five mile radius today? Do you have the potential to get the business to, if you could, if you could wave your wand, are there plenty of homes within your five mile radius that you would have all the business that you could want until the time comes for you to be able to expand your business? If the answer is yes, you have a marketing problem. You have a pain point problem. You're not explaining to people the pain points that you solve and that why they need to use you. If you're a 
bakery and you're in the middle of a uh, commercial real estate, guess what? You're not going to be selling a lot of necessarily birthday cakes and stuff like that as much as you might be making cakes for that radius around there for people doing events and stuff like that. But you could now that I'm thinking about it, you absolutely could because you can solve those people that are busy, hardworking, working in that commercial stuff that have no time and they can't get to a grocery store before they get home, but they can run by you the bakery that's in the middle of their area. So there's a way to think about it. You just have to change what pain point you're solving. So I don't want you to keep thinking that you have to drive all over Tarnation. I'm telling you, you are causing yourself to lose so much cash and so much profit in your business by doing that. You need to focus on that ideal client who is in that ideal customer who is in your five mile radius. You need to tweak the way that you're marketing to them. You need to change and tweak the the pain points that you're solving. All right. Because the more you drive outside of that five mile radius, all you're doing is costing yourself time, gas, profit, other people that you could be helping. There's so many negatives that we could sit down and discuss that you're throwing away by trying to just drive all over Tarnation. Not to mention the fact that you have long ass days. You know what? You're working hard. You know what? You're, you're, you're frustrated because you're having, and if you, heaven forbid, if you have to come back and get something else and you got to backtrack a bunch of miles to be able to get something, it's just, it just, none of it makes sense. I have a saying, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And here's the problem with a lot of you. Just because you can drive 10, 15, 20 miles to help serve somebody doesn't mean you should. I want each and every one of you who is serving larger than a five mile radius to ask yourself, why? Why are you serving outside of that? Because honestly, once you, majority of you, now, if you have a business that you take it to them, you have to say, okay, it's because all the business is outside of that five mile radius. I do events, therefore I have to go outside of that um, five mile radius. Okay, that is probably true. Now, then you have to ask yourself going, okay, but how much of that is true? Is that 100% of your business? Or are there customers within your five mile radius that also could do your your services, your events? Are there places within your five mile radius that you can set up your business and still serve those customers? I just, I don't want you to poo-poo it and say all of a sudden that won't work. Tammy, you don't understand. You don't understand my business. Okay, just pause for a minute and ask yourself in an ideal world, if you could, looking at where you are within your five miles, what would have to happen to make it true that you could run your business within that five mile radius? Okay, that's what I want you to do. Instead of just saying, no, it's not going to work. Ask yourself, what would have to be true in order for you to be able to make that work? What resources, what people, what pain points would you have to solve? How would you need to communicate with people? Whatever the case may be. Uh, You know, part of this whole thing and what we're trying to do, and I'm going to fill you in on our next episode about a video that I actually just put together and it ties into last week. Uh, last week's episode about know your numbers is that a lot of times what happens is we do things because we think that we need to do them, that it's the only way we're going to get our business. And what happens is you guys work more and more hours and more and more hours. Well, every time you work more and more hours and you're not necessarily getting more profit, all you're doing is diluting how much it is that you make an hour. And if you're working more and more hours, and yes, you are getting more profit, but if you're getting the same type of profit, all you're doing is working more hours. You're not earning any more. It's like somebody who goes to work for $10 an hour who picks up five extra shifts and or five extra hours of work, but they're still making the same $10. So all they're doing, they didn't grow. They just worked more hours. They just worked harder. They didn't necessarily work smarter. Whereas opposed to somebody that can say, okay, I'm going to work fewer hours, but I'm going to get a raise. I'm going to increase how much I get per hour. Guess what? They can work the same number of hours. They're not having to work harder. They just have to work smarter at what they do to increase increase their value to make themselves go from 10 to $12 an hour. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, But for a lot of you guys who want to expand the cities that you service, I really want you before you go doing that, asking yourself, do I need to? Do I have enough business within my five mile radius that I'm not taking advantage of today? And what needs to be true in order for me to grow that business within that five mile radius? Do I need to change what it is that I offer? You know what? If you keep trying to shove a square peg into a round hole and it's not working for you, maybe you need to step back and say, wow, I didn't realize this. I need a round peg to go in this round hole. So maybe the services that you're offering don't fit your community. 
All right. Maybe you need to change the services that you offer so that way you can service more people within your five mile radius. Maybe you need to change what it is that how you're communicating to it. You know what? For most of you, if you were just to take one for, uh, for your job, if you were just to take one to two subdivisions and really concentrate your business and own those subdivisions, you would have plenty of business. You know what? It, it you know, what happens is we run all over town and run all over the place to be able to get the business. But what if whatever you did, you focused on a community and really built that business? You know, one that just popped into my head is let's just say you have a, a dog grooming business, uh, probably because I took my dogs to the groomers. But um, if if you have a dog grooming business, you might think, oh, I got to pull from all over the town to be able to do that. But I'm going to bet that in any subdivision that has, say, let's just say a subdivision has a thousand homes. How many of those thousand homes have dogs? Probably at least half, right? If not more, I would probably say more. Let's just say half have dogs. So now we're down to 500 dogs. Now I'm going to assume that of those 500 dogs, we'll assume that they probably all need to get grooming. That doesn't necessarily mean everybody would groom it, but maybe we need to talk about why they need grooming. Maybe we need to find out what type of grooming it is. But let's just say there's 250 dogs. Let's just say half of the half need to have a dog groomer. That's 250 uh, potential dogs that you could be grooming within that particular subdivision. We didn't even leave the subdivision. We just took a thousand homes to 500 homes with dogs to half of those dogs being able to be groomed. That's 250 dogs just waiting for you to be able to groom them. And if you think about it, and, and then you just stack at the next subdivision, but you've got to get it down for that particular subdivision. Instead of shotgunning the entire city, shotgun, you know, focus and rifle approach on a particular subdivision and how you can grow your business there. Because guess what? Those people are going to love what you're going to do. And they're going to turn around. They're going to tell their friends, neighbors, and family that are in the other subdivisions to use you. And it's going to help you grow your business. So you can see there's so many reasons why you need to focus on your local communities and specifically within that five mile radius. And you're going to be shocked at how much business that you can drum up by doing that. Okay, I'm done giving my lecture, but I can tell you that I think that if you just make this simple, easy tweak and really focus your energy in the right way, no longer would you have to drive all over Tarnation to get business. You don't have to continue to chase business into other cities or into other areas of your town that are further away until you are ready to do that. Because then what you do is if you can, because here's the thing, you know, some of you want to know how do you grow really big? Here's why. If you really nail that five mile radius, then all you have to do is duplicate what you did in the next five miles. Duplicate that for success, then duplicate it again in a different area. And guess what? Next thing you know, you're taking over everywhere, but you're doing it systematically. You're doing it with a plan. You're doing it with the crews that are trained on how to do it. And you can continue to grow your business from there. But if you just try to go all over Tarnation and you never really get really good at owning a particular community or a specific area, you're going to struggle because you're going to grow way too fast before you're ready, before you have the systems in place. Get the systems in place, get your communities right, get your marketing right, get everything right. And guess what? You're going to find that for you to be able to grow and expand your business, it's going to be 10 times easier. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. But hopefully this helps some of you guys focus your attention in the right direction. All right, with that, I am going to uh, talk to you on the next episode. And by the way, I'm finishing up a video for uh, what y'all talk about because our next episode has to do with the Know Your Number series. Every Thursday, we talk about that. And uh, I just put something together that I think is kind of fun for everybody. All right. And I do want to talk about your numbers a little bit more because some of you have been frustrating the crap out of me. And uh, in a good way, I'm not mad at you. But I'm going to talk about that on the next episode. So come join me over there. And as always, uh, oh, you know what? No, I'm going to end it here because I really want you to focus on your areas. I don't want to throw too many things at you. Focus on your five mile radius. I'm going to end this because I'm just going to rattle on about other things. I don't want to do that. I want you focused. Your, your, I want your brain leaving me today thinking about your five mile radius and how you're going to attack and grow your business within that five miles and what you need to do. All right, go do that. Don't, don't listen to another word I say. Just focus and put your brain and wrap around that how you can grow your business within your five mile radius.
Bye. Get out of here. Go. Hey, badass business owners. Before you go, just one thing. If you ever feel like you're alone and you would love to be with a like-minded group of individuals, head on over to our Badass Local Small Business Owner Facebook page. We have no spamming, no advertising, anything like that. Just your questions, mine, and we just kind of help each other out, grow our businesses, and share knowledge. You can feel free to know that you're in a safe place and ask your questions of people that are actually going to care about you. So once again, head on over to Facebook. It's the Badass Local Small Business Owner page. You can also hit the show notes and it's right there. Uh, Once again, it's going to be stuff and people out there that care about you and helping you grow your business.